Hi everyone, today we are going to do a little bit of slow stitching. Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and we are going to slow things right down today but just before we do anything at all I've got a few thank yous to say. So Sarah twice, <laughs> Sarah and Sarah, same person, Barbara and Jan, thank you very much for clicking the super thanks button and showing your support for these videos, it's much appreciated. And if you've enjoyed a video and you would like to show your appreciation, you can find that little button below the video, you can click on that and you can donate to us and anything that we receive is going to go back into the filming equipment so we can make more, uh, more videos for you. So I've just finished stitching my version of St Edward's Coronation Crown. It's this little one up here. Thank you to everybody who watched and all your lovely comments about that. And if you didn't see it on social media or on the community page um, and you didn't see Ginger Cat wearing it, um, here he is looking rather fine in it and very regal. <laughs> <laughs> looks so cute in it um, and it was pretty heavy going stitching on my fingers I was trying to get it done in time and my fingers were getting really sore and it was really really small and detailed and I was getting quite cross with it um, so it was quite intense stitching doing that so what we're going to do this week is just slow things right down and just do a really nice fun bit of slow stitching so if you don't know what slow stitching is or you're not sure you've heard about it and you don't really understand what it is, we've got a couple of videos on that. I'll put a link to those up at the end of this one so you can have a good look and see what is slow stitching and what's the idea and what's the point of it. But basically it's a mindful kind of embroidery. You don't need to plan it too much. You don't really need to think about it. You can just enjoy the materials and enjoy the stitching and it's all about that, which is just what I need right now, to be honest. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is actually make something out of it this time. Now the idea of slow stitching that it's about the process and it's not really about the end result necessarily but we do like to make things out of all the stuff if you're creative you don't want a pile of, of things that um, you don't know what to do with so it is fun to make things and this is super easy to do so we're going to make this bunting really cute little pieces so this is um, as I said great if you just want to come down a little bit you just want to do something that's a bit mindful and you don't have to think about it too much and we've also got some holidays coming up here in the UK it's some um, beautiful weather next week's holiday week great thing to do with the kids if you want to and um, also if you want to use up loads of scraps of fabric I'm going to talk about that in a second so this is a great way just to use up little bits of materials and threads that you've got hanging around and you don't quite know what to do with this is the perfect thing so we'll show you the bunting in more detail in a minute but I just want to show you what materials I'm going to use first. So as I said I'm going to use up all the scraps and I'm going to just rustle a few bags here. So this is a bag of quite small pieces of fabric that I saved. So anything that's left over from a project or I found along the way or has been cut up or saved or something like that and that goes in this bag and I just keep them sort of in size order really. So these are kind of medium to small size pieces. And then in this one I've got tiny pieces and yes I do, <laughs> do keep all of these. Looks a bit mad but they kind of all fit in a bag and I think um, once the bag is overflowing it's time to use them really. And these are really good for slow stitching. Got all these little pieces left, tiny pieces that would normally go in the bin. It's a bit of silk there, it's a shame to throw some silk away. We've got pattern pieces and some of them are not like really, oh I can't use that. But these are absolutely perfect for slow stitching, especially this size project. So I've got the really small bits in there. And if you saw my video on how to organise your embroidery stash, you will have seen this tin before. So this tin has all my little odds and ends in it. And this tin was a bargain. It was half price because it had a dent in the side of it. And this is where I put all those leftover bits of threads. So, <laughs> falling out. So um, just little ends of, of skeins and ones that have come in kits or left over from kits or I don't even know where some of these have come from and I just put them all in the tin then if I just want a little bit of thread um, to practice with or from my, a bit of my slow stitching this is a great tin to go to I don't need to know what colour it is or what number it is or buy any nice new threads for it I can just dive in here and use some of those so I'm going to use those today as well. 
and if you've done any slow stitching before you see me do any you now like to put some other things in it as well so a great chance as I said to use up those little leftover bits and pieces so I've got some laces here these are really lovely beautiful little laces um, I have got some beads as well and I've used some sequins on this and some little motifs that I found and I'll show you those in a minute so you can add anything you like onto it you could do a theme if you wanted to if you're having a party you could do one with spots on it or you could do the colour theme or you could do a nature one and you could sew some feathers on it you could do anything you like if you can sew it down you can you can put it on basically so I've got a few extra little things as well and I'll show you what I've used on my bunting and then the other things that I have got are something for a backing fabric I'll go into this in a second because I'm going to do my pieces on top of this and I have to string the whole thing together I got some bias binding and I'll talk through bias binding when I come to assemble it if you don't know what this is and why this is good for this I'll talk about that um at the end when I come to assemble it so I think we've got all our materials so let's do some stitching so this bunting is super super easy to make and I have just made mine out of lots of little triangle shapes you don't even need to do a triangle you can just do a rectangle if you wanted to um, but I've done a traditional bunting shape of a triangle and I'm going to show you these shortly so let me just show you how I got my triangle So here's the little template that I've made. I've just cut it out of cardboard and it's super easy to make a triangle. You don't need to know any maths at all. Just cut yourself a square and then if you fold the square in half, just crease it at the bottom and then all you need to do, I would get a ruler to do this, is to join the middle point that you've just folded up with a corner like so. And then you've got your triangle shape and then you can just cut off the edges and you can use that so really really easy to make a triangle so that's my template shape and then i've used the backing fabric for these triangles just to make uh, give myself something to sew into really you can just do it um, straight onto the fabric if you want um, if you're going to have your bunting outside and it flaps around in the wind it's a little bit more fragile like that so i thought i'll just make it a little bit stiffer and a little bit more um, weatherproof if you like I wouldn't put it out in the rain but a little bit more windproof maybe so I've just used something a little bit thicker here I've got a canvas material you could use a calico cotton that would be fine so I've just got this um, canvas it's a little bit thicker and then all I'm going to do I've got a pen is draw around my template so I've cut one out here you can see where I've cut that out so just taking it right up to the edge and I can just go along it like so and then the good thing about triangles if you just flip it over you can just go right up to that previous one so you can use all of your fabric with this you don't have to waste any won't get another one on there but that's fine ginger cat's just making himself comfortable and then you just cut them out if you're doing them next to each other like I have to cut really carefully <laughs> because you'll lose the shape otherwise of one of them. You can leave a gap if you're not so confident with that. Like so. So basically cut yourself a load of triangles like that so that's my backing fabric I want something to sew onto so I had a little dive in my bag of all my goodies here and you can use any material for this because we're just going to layer some things up and do some stitching through so you can use very fine fabrics as well so I've got everything here and I just thought I'll show you these few so this is like a little suede sort of a purpley colour and I had a little bit of a theme of fairly strong colours pinks and purples and blues but it's got a bit lost with the stuff I've put on the top so it, that doesn't matter I'm fine with that um, here's a nice kind of organza -y type chiffon probably more so you can see through fabric I've got um, quite a thin one there there's some silk there there's printed cottons you can use anything literally anything any kind of fabric for this is another silk there look so I've had a little dive in my bag and pulled a few out just be quite instinctive with this there's no right or wrong with it just go with what you like so i have actually I'm going to make one triangle and then show you how to attach it to the other triangles because once you know how to do one you can do as many as you like so 
I have got myself my backing here and I've just cut one out what looks like a fairly boring cotton so this is quite um, quite a dark sort of teal shade and I've just used the same template to cut that out you can pin it on and cut around it if you can't see a pen on the fabric and that's all there is that's the basis of my triangle so what we're going to do is decorate it so I've pulled out a few things that are interesting I think they're interesting here so and some of these are from the previous triangles as well so I've used the materials again and that gives it a little bit of cohesion if you want it to all look like the same sort of piece of fabric if you like but you don't have to do that at all so these laces are lovely so just enjoy playing with these now just enjoy the fabrics and moving them around you can lay them all and swap them over and take them out put some more in you can play to your heart's content because you don't have to do any stitching yet so it's all movable so this lace is very beautiful lace which is the right side of it that's the right side of it so we could put some lace on there um this is quite pretty this is just a little piece of sample fabric that's come from somewhere it's got these beautiful roses on it that would look quite nice as well that's really lovely with the roses on it or i could do them going down i can cut them to shape afterwards i'm not worried about that i'm just going to layer some things up i've got these little machine embroidered pieces these actually came from caroline who used to make jewelry out of these and these were the sort of ones that never made it to the jewelry and i had them and they're great for this that could go on it there got some different lace oh lost my triangle this has got little bows on it this one is nice and again you could you can layer things up as much as you like with this and if you don't like something um, you can just take it off and rearrange it if you start stitching and you still don't like it it's not finished basically just keep going just pile some more stuff on top of it until you've got something that's that you like we're going to add stitches as well remember so don't worry too much so i think what i'm going to do got a bit of organza which is quite interesting colors so maybe we'll go with a i quite like that actually let's put some lace that way up on there and that little thing wants to go on as well and then i could put some beads on quite liking those colors in there we've got the stitches that we can decorate with as well so i think i am going to go with that i'm going to save those for another occasion so we need to just cut those to size now i could be a bit more sparing with my lace couldn't i, I could do that that's it So it's like a sort of a patchwork really you're just crazy patchwork <laughs> there's no measuring or anything like that in it so that's going to go like that that's going to go across the top i'm going to just bring it down because that top bit's going to disappear in my bias binding so let's do that like so i need to pin it now i'm not worried about that shape i'll sort that out in a second so when you've got a design that you like and just be instinctive literally just go with what you feel looks nice it's no right or wrong so i love this it's not like the crown where <laughs> i had to keep going and looking at it and going how did they make this what's supposed to be here this one i can do whatever i like so i've pinned it together like that i can just trim that lace bit there's a little bit of lace that could go on somewhere else if i want to i have done that on one of the others so I've just pinned those so they don't move. I'm going to leave that off for now. That can go on at the end. And I'm just going to grab myself some thread. Now, as with the fabric, you can use any thread you like as well. You could use some sparkly threads. You can use some wool, you can use cotton, some linen. Literally, you can use any thread. So that can be a bit overwhelming if you've got a lot of threads. So just go with um, a few colours or just one colour. I'm just going to start with one colour. If I want to add another one, I can. And I'm just using my uh, Lana thread. I've got a little end that's left over here. This is our Bourbon Lana um, acrylic and wool mix. And I was going to use that colour on. I thought that's really nice, but you can't see it that well on the camera. <laughs> so I'm going to change to a bright pink colour so that you can see what I'm actually doing, which will help. 
and then I'm just going to sew these together and all I've done in this bunting is I just used one stitch and I've just used running stitch I haven't put any different stitches in at all but you can put whatever you like on this if you um, enjoy your stitches and you like some decorative stitches then you can just put them all on it's fine but I'm going to hold the whole thing together because I need some structure in there so I'm just going to come underneath and go all the way around the outside now this top part is going to get trapped in the bias binding when we come to put it together so I've just put a knot on the end there I'm not worried about that that's going to get sewn in so you won't see the knot and it's not going to come undone if you're all going oh she's just started with a knot <laughs> another reason why I like slow stitching so that will get covered up later so I've just started a stitch in that corner I'm going to do a running stitch all the way down this edge here just to hold all these layers together I'm going quite close to the edge make sure you catch everything in I'm not worrying about folding in seams or doing proper edges or hiding the rough bits just going to go all the way down and I really like that about slow stitching you don't have to think about seams and complicated things like that how am I going to hide the ends you can just let them all show and I think that's really nice about it you can show off the fabrics because all these different fabrics do different things at the edges some fray and some don't and it's nice to just let them be what they want to be so I'm coming quite close to the edge just going to move that pin all the way down to the point and back up the other side just come up the other side there you don't need to go across the top because that gets stitched in later and I'm just going to turn that over so you can see where I stitched down here and up here that's it that's all I need so we can take that pin out and I can actually take all of them out just make sure you're holding it down now obviously these are only being held at the edge here so if you want to come and put some more stitching in you can I can use that same thread I mean that will go over the top so it will hold it in but just stitch whatever you think <clears throat> needs stitching down I'm just still doing my running stitch I'm not changing but if you want to you can put some French knots in you could do buttonhole edging around it you could change your color if you want to just do what's fun that you enjoy this is not supposed to be a difficult thing this is not the time to probably learn something new either just enjoy the feel of the fabric and the thread I'm enjoying not having a pattern to follow just make it up as you go along So I've just sewn across the lace there that's not sewn down but that's not going anywhere because it's sewn down at the sides as well and across here so I'm happy with that so I'm going to just finish that thread off I think and all I'm going to do on the back just to finish it is take a little bit of the backing fabric this is where backing fabrics really come into their own because you can just use a little bit of it just to over sew a couple of times and then I like to go through that loop just sort of ties it off so nice neat finish I don't need to hide anything for that one that's absolutely fine so I've got the basis of my little piece of bunting in and I can just decorate it now so I'm going to put this little bit on here I think that wants to go which way up should I put it I want to put that there and then I think I might put some beads on it as well I like these gold beads just to pick out the color in that and I'm going to put some gold beads down here and up here so let's do that bit next if you can hear a noise it might be ginger cat snoring he's very settled very comfortable here see slow stitching is working for him as well he's completely relaxed right I'm going to sew this on with a normal sewing cotton here because I'm going to put my beads on with the same cotton as well so I've just switched cottons for that and I'm just going to hold that in place and come up from the back I've got a knot on the back stitch over the gold bits it's purring very loudly very happy aren't you buddy
you can use the stitches as decorative stitches you don't have to hide them I'm just doing them this color so you don't see them because I like this little motif I think that's really pretty you could put buttons on you could put sequins on buttons would be really nice actually on there if you've got a button jar get the button jar out Look really lovely on this you could do some applique on it world is your oyster when it comes to slow stitching okay that's around there and then I'm going to put my beads on now my beads I want to put down here so what I'm going to do I'm going to use the same thread I'm just going to travel it underneath that fabric there on the back you can start and stop try not to travel too far now all the stitches on the back are showing which I don't mind I quite like that but if you have a long piece a long stitch there it could break and things could fall off and we're doing slow stitching but we still want to do it well we still want to do it nicely so I've just traveled my thread down to here so it's nice and secure and I'm just going to put some beads on it some lovely gold beads thread them all on now double thread is better for bees and I've got a single but that doesn't matter because I'm just going to go through them twice so just thread them on like so let's put another I'm trying to do this so you can see it so I hope you can just going to go down the other end like that and then it can come up between and couch over them if you want to know about putting beads and sequins on your stitching we have videos on that too because they really do add some lovely texture to it and a little bit of bling so you can't add too much bling so I've just couched over that couple of stitches over that thread to hold them in place and then as I said it should really have two threads for beads just to make them a bit more secure so I'm just going to go back through them again there we go And I can just finish that on the back now I could keep going with this if I want to you can put as much on as you want bear in mind if you want some bunting you're going to need quite a few triangles so you could do your other triangles now and then if you're still enjoying it and you still want to go ahead and do a bit more you can go and add some more stuff on or you can make your bunting longer um, but I'm just going to stop there because I want to show you how to assemble these into your length of bunting now I have put most of my pieces on this bias binding um, pull that bit out there to show you so I'm going to attach that one in there that's going to be my last triangle and I just want to talk briefly about this bias binding so this is used to um, go around the bottom of hems um, for your clothing or if you're doing waistbands or something like that and what's special about bias binding is it's cut on the bias so it's cut diagonally on your fabric and what that means that it does is it actually bends round things quite nicely and I want to fold this in half so it normally comes with these edges folded in like so and then you fold it around the edge of your fabric like that and when you fold it it just means it will go around these curves if you do it on a piece that's not cut on the bias you get all sorts of wrinkles and funny things happening up here so bias binding is really good for this if you don't have some it doesn't matter you could use some ribbon it will work just as well you might just have to play with that edge a little bit and iron it flat and make sure you've got um haven't got those bubbles in it so bias binding is better you can get it in lots of different colors as well if you want a different color I'm just going to use the white because that's what I have got so we're just going to fold it in half and all we do is we trap the triangle in there so that's where all this raw edge is now going to get covered and that starting knot that I had and we just fold that over the top and then we're just going to work a running stitch all the way through that side and that side so that's nice and secure so that's how the bias binding works so let's do that on here take the pin out now I've just done a finger width in between each one so let's just place that in there like so a bit closer I think and then just pin that together now make sure that goes right up to the join there you want to trap as much of that as you can so it doesn't come out I'm just going to pin it through there 
like so the same the other end and then again just a running stitch to hold the whole thing together and I've got my thread started here so you can see what I've done I've just done this running stitch gone through the bias binding it's gone through this um, the stitching the little triangle and through to the back as well so just turn it over occasionally just make sure you have caught the back and you're not stitching down here something and the triangles fallen out so just keep an eye on that but this is probably the most technical it gets for this so I'm just going to thread this up and just running stitch now the easiest way to do this running stitch is just to stab up and down you can do a running stitch where you kind of weave through the fabric but it doesn't work very well for this you really need to have your needle going straight down because you want to go through the two layers and try and make it the same on the back as it is on the front if you can and then you'll know you've trapped everything and so all I'm going to do is along that edge of the bias binding and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the triangle stab straight down and then when you turn it over you can see it's in the right position on the back whenever you angle a needle in it'll always do something different on the back so straight down will get the same on the back as you get on the front and then when you get to your pin you can just take the pin out so that's all there is to it it's super super easy and fun and I thought yesterday when I was making these little triangles oh it's going to take me ages to make these and I was out in the sunshine Ginger cat was hovering around, enjoying the sunshine with me, and we just sat and stitched slow, stitched triangles, and I did them really quickly, and I really enjoyed doing it. Not really nice and relaxing, and don't have to worry about doing it wrong. So I can recommend this if you just need a little bit of chill out stitching, <laughs> if you like. So I'm just going to go to the end, and then I want to show you what I've done on the other triangles. So I sewed all the way to the end of the bias binding. You can use that little end there to attach it to whatever you want to attach it to. If you want to just fold it over and sew it there and make a little loop, you can do that because then you could tie it onto something or you could hook it over a nail or something like that. So that might be worth doing as well. But I'm just going to finish that off on the back. Just going to join that together. Just make the ends extra secure because that's always the bit where something frays or something comes apart is the ends or the edges so I'm just going to go over that a couple of times back through there cut that off so there's that one that I have just done and as soon as you put it in place it looks like a really beautiful finished piece because um, I've just hidden that raw edge under there so let's have a look at the other triangles so let's work backwards from the one that we have just done so this one here is a little piece of linen on the back I've got some kind of fabric I think I made a, a shirt out of this <laughs> I seem to remember this fabric quite quite well and I love these little frayed edges this is a um, woven in two different threads you've got gold one way and the pink the other way and that's called a shot fabric um, and I just like those little fluffy bits I quite left those there and just a little lace motif I had a piece of lace cut the flower out and I've just sewn around here and just some little stitches here to hold the petals down and some little bits of seeding so I have actually done another stitch <laughs> that is another stitch believe it or not it just looks like running stitch but scattered just to hold this little bit of fabric around so you don't have to put a lot on it to look really pretty but this works well because it's got different fabrics on it and the different fabrics together look really nice this mad thing here was a little bit of um blue fabric it's already got pattern in it it's got kind of a black stripey pattern and some dots in it it's got a little bit of hand painted silk on there that i was trying something out in and i was just trying some paints on some silk a little bit of that lace that we looked at earlier on top as well um, and then i've just done my running stitch and i just show you the back you can see where i stitched so you don't have to do a lot of stitching just holding that one on that's all that's on there but because I've done those pretty fabrics together that's all I need this one a little bit more bling just this um, kind of velveteen purple fabric under here I've done the running stitch around all of these down the sides to hold that together for the triangle a little bit of silk here I've left the frayed edge again I really like that this little bow I found on the floor yesterday <laughs> it's like perfect for slow stitching so I stuck that on there stick it on sewed that on there and then a little um little flower sequin to match the purple as well just to give it a little bit of bling 
this one is like green satin underneath and this was a shirt well it was a kind of a top that had this see-through fabric on the sleeves and I bought this from a charity shop just because I liked the fabric of it and I cut it up <laughs> just to use the fabric so that's a little bit of that fabric it's really nice and I've done a little slow stitch spiral if I turn that now we can see slow stitch spirals are really lovely if you want to hold lots of layers of fabric together just gone round in a running stitch but just round in a spiral and they go a uh, row of beads on there just to add that little bit of texture to it this mad thing <laughs> we've said right at the beginning if it's not working for you don't like it just keep going just keep piling some stuff on and that's what happened with this one so this has got a lot on it it's got this bright green fabric underneath and I put a little bit of this sort of gold netting on it and I thought oh I don't really like those together and then I put a bit of lace on it there's a little lace motif there I thought oh still not right so I bunged another bit of lace on the top that beautiful one with the scalloped edging thought it still needs something else it needs a centerpiece if you like and I found in my stash of stuff um some motifs these little gold work motifs on there and I've just sewn the motif and I haven't stitched all of that that came like that and I've just sewn that down and that just adds that little bit of detail on it so just keep going if you don't like it if you really still don't like it just move on to the next one so nice plain one here this is a couple of layers of organs I was playing around with something remember this I'm going to show you this because it's quite interesting so that's come from this and this is a couple of layers a really horrible pink color well, it's not horrible pink but it's a bit bright on its own with a gold piece on top and a little bit of blue on there and I was just practicing and um, I've actually melted this together with a soldering iron do that in a well ventilated area by the way if we're going to do that because you are melting plastic basically and I just melted it together and made these layers and that was really pretty and you can see I've used it and done things with it before but that's what that background is it's just a piece of that and it's really beautiful with the gold on top just toned down and then a little bit of patterned I think that's Liberty fabric on the top there and I've just slow stitched in circles around that like so so a fair bit of stitching on that one just thought that was so beautiful as it is it didn't need anything else adding to it blue one here that's the bodice of that bit of um, fabric I showed you earlier with the sleeves with the see-through sleeves that was the bodice so same pattern I put that underneath bit of net on top bit of lace on top put some sequins and some beads in there simple one some of these look much more complex than they are <laughs> bit of green cotton a bit more of this but the gold part and with no pink part I think and some little pieces of lace and just the raw edge of that in there as well which I've just left so you can use these little details in your slow stitching and the last one is that um, sort of suede stuff I think I showed you right at the beginning that piece there some of that a little bit more of that organza some stitching to hold both pieces on so to hold the two triangles together and to show hold that bit of organza on and another of Caroline's beautiful machine embroidered little shapes there's actually a little shell in there just for the detail so let me just hold that up so you can see it how pretty it is so you could really personalize this you can make it as long as you want you can make the triangles as big as you want as well they've done quite diddy ones just to show you there so I hope you have enjoyed that um I know it inspired to have a little go at making some bunting and just to show you something that you can make out of it and if you keep watching in the future next week's video I'm going to show you 20 things that you can make with your slow stitching so I'm excited to show you that one do check out this video up here if you are interested in slow stitching one <laughs> ginger cat knocking things off the table if you want to know more about slow stitching do go and check those out give this a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and we will see you next time